what, what I want to say is that Pakistan is so charged up at the moment. And I used to say that is may of subjaling, meaning that everyone will burn in this fire at some point. What I meant by that is that first they victimized Ahmadis, Christians, Hindus, and now, now Shias, and Shias are now actually fight, starting to fight back. So there's a lot of tension between ha um, has been going on between Shias and Sunnis. But now, which is the prediction I made nearly a year ago, which is not really a prediction because it's just common sense, that within the Sunni sect of Islam, there are three uh, major groups, the Ubandis, Brailwis, and al -Ahadis. These three major um, Sunni groups are at each other's throats all the time. So, um, they've been they've been going at each other. There was another Twitter trend trend last uh, I saw yesterday um, where Shias were going at this Ahle Hadith or Salafi um, Salafi scholar who actually didn't insult one of the Ahle Bat, meaning the the the. the people from the lineage of Prophet Muhammad, which who Shias hold really dear. Um, so he didn't do it directly, but his nephew, in a WhatsApp exchange or something, he cursed him, uh, cursed one of the family members of the Prophet. Uh, and that was in response to, because Shias don't like Muawiyah, um, uh, because of Imam Hassan and Hussein and all of that, whatever happened, and Abu Sufyan and his lineage. So... Yesterday, there were 40,000 tweets saying that, you know, we need to get these people. So anyway, so this is Sunnis and Shias. But but I, as I said, that's been going on for a few for, for a few years as well. But that's not where it ends. So Ahmadis, and atheists, Hindus, Christians, Shias, and now within Sunnis. So there was a guy, his name is Imadul Islam, who is a close friend or confidant of a person, a uh, very famous scholar in Pakistan, engineer Muhammad Ali Mirza, who um, I tend to respect a lot just because of his consistency, but he's, and he's non-violent. So, you know, I mean, kind of a reformist in a weird way. Like his reform is going back to the actual time of Prophet Muhammad and the four caliphs. That's it. Everything else that followed afterwards, he likes to throw it under the bus. So anyway, very deep. A lot of Indian Pakistanis know who I'm talking about because he produces his content in Urdu. But anyway, so his confidant came to me a few times on my Urdu channel and spoke with me a few times. And um, that guy is just, you know, like he's so sweet and nice. And he's just like, Harris, you're an atheist. You know, it's okay. You know, I still love you. And I wish to live a day when, you know, atheists can roam around freely in Pakistan. And, you know, like basically just generally nice messages he sent got in trouble and i was like i told him i said don't show your face actually don't maybe it's not the right time but then i thought you know if he wants to do it and also at some point someone has to speak up so anyway so he did and then he did the ruju meaning like he reaffirmed that his he is a firm believer of allah and and the, and, and the prophet um and then he um and i deleted that video because some other Sunnis, he's a Sunni as well. Some other Sunnis were using that against him. Anyway, so, and then he ended up going to one of other, uh, she's not, well, Mali Sarkari, I don't know if you know her. She, 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 is, she, she's, she doesn't really talk much about Islam, but she sometimes she does because she's a feminist. So he went on her channel and that pissed off a lot of people. I don't know why, why that pissed off so many more people. Um, so much so that one of the very big clerics came from Lahore to his city, Jalem. His name is uh, Tahir Ashrafi, I think. Uh, we'll put up a photo in our excerpt. Um, so he's a big guy. So he went to Jalem and they called him to come to a mosque. And he was kind of ambushed and it must have been so scary. Now, I haven't spoken to him directly, but I've heard from my sources. <laughs> so anyway, so so they put him at a, uh, and I'll actually translate it as I go along, because uh, this video is in Urdu, and I'm not going to be able to, um, I wasn't able to put subtitles on it. Here's this guy. He was He was given a script on a mobile phone where he was told that he is asking for forgiveness, 
Allah forgives everyone, no matter what kind of a sin you have committed. And by sin, he meant that he has spoken with atheists like myself and Mali Sarkari. And not only just that, because I think we were just used as a little pawn or we were we, we were just a little stepping stone for these guys because these guys have a major beef against this guy, this scholar that I was talking to you about earlier, engineer Muhammad Ali Mirza, a very famous scholar, produces a lot of content in Urdu, and, uh, in Urdu, not in English. And he has, in the last five years or so, he's become arguably the biggest Pakistani Islamic scholar. And um, and and by profession, he's actually an engineer, so he's not like brother Dr. Zaganak. So the other one is a doctor, made made um, great progress in this um, Dava scene. And now this guy is an engineer, and he did pretty good. So anyway, so this guy was a close confidant of Engineer Muhammad Ali Mirza. So not only they actually attacked us, which is which is understandable that hey, why did you talk to atheists? But he he was made to condemn that Islamic scholar who the, the, there's no doubt that he is a Muslim and he is doing what he thinks is best for Islam. He's serving Islam. But my point is the reason why I want to tell you this story is and anyway, so this guy was under a lot of probably still under a lot of stress. He actually was forced to condemn his own friend. Um, and imagine there's like 40, 30, 40 people surrounding you and they make you say it. So the point that I wanted to make is that, oh, by the way, this scholar, his main beef is, as I said, because he, he wants to just go back to Muhammad and the first four caliphs. So he doesn't want to follow anything else. But in India and Pakistan, there's a strong culture of following ancient clerics like, um, you know, uh, or they have their own babas, what they call them baba, the peer babas. So, um, for example, the founder of Deobandi belief, founder of Brelvi belief, uh, sect. So they are the extensions of Islam and in, in Pakistan and India. These are the only types of Muslim uh, Sunni sects that, that are very dominant. And as soon as you go out of India and Pakistan, they probably wouldn't even know what Deobandi or Brelvi means. But these guys in India and Pakistan, they believe that all the other Muslims are actually kafirs and only Brelvi, for example, Brelvi sect is the one true Islam and they're going to go to heaven. 70% of Pakistani population's population is Brelvi. And then the second biggest sect is Durbandi. Well, I think Durbandis are more dominant in India, but anyway, India, Pakistan, they believe that all the other sects of Sunni Islam, Shias, Sunnis, everyone else is going to hell and only they are the real one. But the funny thing is, as soon as you go out of India and Pakistan, nobody knows what the Ubandis and Brailvis are. They're like, well, what? Um, so this guy, scholar, engineer Muhammad Ali Mirza, has created a lot of waves, and he he condemns this behavior. He says, no, the Ubandi, no Brailvi, I'm only a Muslim. That's it. Prophet Muhammad and four caliphs, that's it. Nothing else afterwards. So, And he's a massive follower of Bukhari and Muslim and the six Sunni books. He's a proponent of that. So all these people actually now hate him. Like the Ubandis, Brailvis, all the scholars, most of this, um, the, the whole of this clergy in India and Pakistan consists of the Ubandi, Brailvi, and there are literally tens of thousands, if not a hundred thousand imams uh, belonging to this. He's a one man show. So they used us to condemn him. But the point is, they're all hating on each other. And it, we're sitting on a ticking time bomb because it's only a matter of time when they're literally going to devour each other. This guy, as you saw in the video, proper Muslim, and has a beard, wears that traditional shalwar kameez, talks about Islam, talks about Allah, Muhammad all the time, and they ambushed him and they made him condemn him publicly. Um, and they recorded the video. So I think the guy's in hiding or something. I don't know where he is, but... Um, but that's, the, that's why I say everyone is going to burn in this fire unless Pakistan wakes up. And uh, to be honest, I don't think they're going to wake up. See, a lot of people think that, oh, you know, it's just Sunni versus Shia. But no, that's the funny thing. So let me, let, let me tell you a little bit more about it. So Sunni has, Sunni Islam has got, I don't know, over 50, 60 different sects across the world. But even Sunnis have, you know, the four Imams, Maliki, Hanfi, Hanafi, Hanbali, Shafi, all these guys. So the Ubandis and Brailvis, which are the biggest, the most dominant sect, sects of um, India and Pakistan, they even extend from Imam Hanafi. 
So even then they consider each other kafirs. So they're not, it's not like Imam Hanfi versus Imam Maliki. No, it's Imam Hanafi. And the further extension of that, even they don't get along well. So that is how divisive Islam is. And it's only a matter of time when these guys are going to just eat each other alive. To help me produce more videos like these, support me on Patreon or PayPal.